PSD with you. Tutorials on gaming. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. I was recently asked by a user whether or not it was easy to install FreeBSD 12 with the XFCE 4.14 desktop. And luckily the 4.14 XFCE desktop has uh, been released ooh, about three weeks ago now. So I thought I'd just make this video, this, this quick video really, just showing you how easy it is. It's not difficult. So again, as in previous videos, here is the initial boot screen for the FreeBSD 12 disk. Or USB, whichever you're using. And it will count down at the bottom, it's not in this particular one because I paused it, but it will count down and then you just press enter. And it will boot into the initial setup uh, screen. Installing FreeBSD these days is, is not difficult in, in any shape or form. It's really quite easy. Uh, you get the welcome to FreeBSD screen. Um, for all intents and purposes, you just need to press in enter for install. You can choose the other options if you wish, but they have a specific need and uh, use. And now you need to choose a key map. In my instance, I will go down to United Kingdom if I can find it. There you go. And you can test it or just continue. I'll just continue there. Choose a host name. Any host name you want. Nice and short is usually better. Enable or disable which optional system components you want to install. So I'm going to not install the kernel debugging. And choose parts and source. I normally choose auto UFS for a desktop or manually uh, ZFS or manual UFS when I'm doing a server, but I'm gonna choose Auto ZFS now. And despite what some people may say, it's okay to choose the auto. You don't have to manually partition every single computer you install, either Linux or FreeBSD on. Takes us on to the ZFS configuration. Uh, choose Stripe, no redundancy, because we've got a single disk. If you have more than one disk, you can choose Mirror, etc. And leave the rest to default. You could encrypt if you wish, but not on this occasion. I'm not going to do that. Install, ask you whether you want to continue, and yes, we do. I'm going to speed up the install. Uh, it's not that particularly long, but just for the sake of brevity. And now we need to choose a root password or system administrator password. You'll need that later on in order to change, uh, you know, elevate to root when you're actually installing things. Retype it, yeah. Choose network card, IPv4, and DHCP. All of these are acceptable. You, you can manually configure this, but in this instance, I'm just going to choose DHCP. And disregard IPv6 on this occasion. Leave this as the default. Time zone, I'll need to go down to Europe. Again, you choose whichever one that uh, suits yourself. Europe, then United Kingdom. Great standard time, yes, that's fine. Set the date, set time. Okay. System configuration, yes, I'm just going to check these ones and uncheck dump dev, because I don't need that. Uh, disable DD trace. Uh, disable send mail and disable syslogd and clear temp. These are the ones that I usually choose. Add users. It wouldn't be very much of a system if you didn't add any users. I suppose you could get by on root if you wish. I've seen one or two people uh, use a system with root, which is not encouraged. Logging group. Yep, yeah, wheel. Don't forget to put wheel in your logging group because you're not going to be able uh, to access. Uh, admin privs if you don't do that. Enter a password. You might want a random password. Just choose your password here. And again. 
you know you don't want to lock out the account and okay yes uh, no other user and then that's it it's really quite painless um, you can explore these other options if you wish but in this case we'll just uh, exit it and don't want to make any modifications and that is it I'm going to reboot and we'll log into the newly installed system right we're just logging in we just need to do a couple of things before we install uh, Xorg and XFCE. So using your preferred method of SU, sudo or duas, um, get into root. And we're just going to... I'm just going to run PKG update because this is the first time that we've used it on the system. We like to sync the database, etc. And false of habit, I always do package uh, upgrade. Of course, there won't be any upgrades because it's just been installed. I right, clear that. Now we can start installing Xorg. And a command such as pkg install Xorg is all you need to get that going. And then we will skip to the end. I'm not going to fast forward this because there's a lot to do. Right, clear that. And now we can install XFCE. And it really is as simple as that. You just type in PKG install XFCE and it will it will fetch everything you need. Right, now that's done. I'm going to install a login manager. This is not something I usually do. Um, well, if I do, then I use XTM. But I'm going to use SDDM. Yes, I know they can use Slim, but... I actually prefer SDDM. So we are downloading that. I'm not going to skip this because it's not particularly uh, a long install process. There you go. And before we use this system, we just may we just need to use a make a couple of modifications to the rc.com. So edit uh, rc.conf. Some people like to install different editors. I prefer uh, edit, which is basically uh, a sim link to uh, easy edit or EE. It was a nice command and it's pretty straightforward. Right, at the bottom of the system install entries, I always like to put some uh, hashes there to separate them. So I know which bits uh, I, I've added to it. And we need to enable dbus. You don't have to enable the next one. Um, it, it's kind of debatable. Some Linux oriented desktops prefer if you have this in, but it's a gray area. I don't normally put it in, but for this instance, we're going to enable uh, HAL, which is the hardware abstraction layer. It is kind of deprecated, really. Uh, and then FreeBSD has a perfectly good uh, dev system, which. Um, it's perfectly fine. But I'm going to enable it anyway. Just for compatibility reasons. I don't know how XFCE will react if I don't enable it. And the final one will be to enable SDDM to automatically start when we log in. And that looks fine. Yes, we'll save that. Right, we're just going to get out of the root. And need to edit X in it RC. I kind of do this all the time because I like to start up um, using StartX or XDM and that really does require you to put uh, an entry in here. So it's XX start XFCE4. Don't worry, these commands, there's not that many involved, but I'll put these commands in the description box below so you can just follow them if you wish. We're going to reboot the system. If you're using a machine with uh, NVIDIA or AMD graphics, then of course you will want to load in your uh, drivers. And I presume that you know how to do that. But in this occasion, because it's VirtualBox, we'll just leave it as it is. I'm not going to install guest editions, but you could also do that, of course. Right, you see, it automatically starts up and there's SDDM. Very nice it is too. I like SDDM. At the top there, you can see you've got XFCE session already laid out. And the layout is US, which I don't think there's an option to change. Nope, there isn't. Yeah, just keep it as XFCE session. And type in your password that we put in earlier. 
and hopefully, yep, there we are, a nice brand new install of FreeBSD and XFCE 4.14. But you're going to have to need to put some uh, some programs in, otherwise you're not going to be able to use it to the full extent. You do get the usual um, panel, usual utilities coming with XFCE. I'm not going to give you a rundown of what each one does, because I'm sure that you already know. I'm also going to keep the resolution fairly, um, I'm going to keep it fairly low so you can see what's going on easy. We're just going to go into root and we're going to install one or two packages. We're going to need a web browser, so Firefox. Firefox is the, my browser of choice. LibreOffice, so you get some work done. GIMP and Inkscape to handle the graphics. I think I'm going to need to put in uh, so an email client. This is what I do routinely anyway every time I get a system. VLC. VLC uh, is pretty good. Although I sometimes I prefer mPlayer. And we're just going to install. Again, I will fast forward to the end. I don't want to be sat here watching a continuous stream of text. Right, we just jump right to the end. And finished. Okay, that's great. And then we've got all the basic essentials installed. And just to show you that we are actually indeed using 4.14. And very good. There's your desktop settings. You don't get much wallpaper for those who are interested. Again, it's trivial to add your own, so it really doesn't matter. And your icons and fonts, etc. And there you go. Very good, it's quite straightforward, very easy, and you can have a nice working desktop on FreeBSD in no time. And it only uses 255 megabytes of memory, which is nothing. Not really. Yes, I know you can get smaller, but that's that's usually when you're using a very lightweight uh, window manager. I'll just show you the discrepancy between using HTOP, as I see some reviewers doing when they're looking at FreeBSD, they'll say, oh, look how much memory that it uses. And you can see in HTOP it says you're getting 1.03 gigabytes. And they'll say, oh, it's using over gigabyte of memory when it's not doing anything. And it's not true. It is using 249, 251. The rest is put away, squirreled away, just in case the system needs it. And if it doesn't, then it'll be reclaimed when it does. So it's not over a gigabyte of memory being used, it's only 250. And that's what many people get wrong. Anywho, there you go. All done. A nice little working system. Um, and there's the file system layout for a um, ZFS. Very nice indeed. And just to show you, it's on FreeBSD 12. Yeah, and I haven't actually uh, updated the system yet. The FreeBSD update fetch, which I will be doing later. And then that's it. Lovely, lovely. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.